Mr. President, just a gentle reminder before we begin our service, if anybody has a cell phone, if we could take a minute to turn it on silent. On behalf of the family, I want to thank everybody for joining us here and for those who are joining on the live stream. Officiating our service today is Rabbi Wendy Geffen and Rabbi Shoshana Conover. As we come together to remember our Lorraine, we do so at a time where we are brokenhearted as a people. This morning's news broke our hearts, and as a people, we are in a time of comforting. Today is a time in which we still are in these Shabbatot and other Sabbaths of comfort, Nechenta, where we make sure with each week that we're looking out to the people around us and we're thinking about the ways in which we all need comfort. So what a reminder to us that today, when our beloved Michael and Kimberly are mourning their mother, we know as a people it is our duty to give comfort. When we are remembering our Lorraine who was larger than life, who we can imagine on a day like this would pull into a parking lot with her top down in her Mercedes. We can imagine that she would light up any room and specifically the rooms in which her grandchildren were there. Never missed a single opportunity to celebrate family, to bring more love into this world, to understand what it is to both be there for family and to expand family through great friendships. Our Lorraine, she taught us so much about how to live a life well lived, with fun, with purpose, and truly with family. So today, our hearts break with Michael, and with Kimberly, and we know that she took in their partners like her own. So Rebecca and Tal, we also are grieving with you. Our hearts are broken, and we know it is our duty to comfort you as well. To these incredible grandchildren, to Josh, and to Jacob, and to Jonah, to Noah and Naomi, we are here to comfort you. Your grandma was the best. I can't imagine your loss. We're grateful to be here with you, to be able to bring some words and gestures of comfort. We know that her niece Amy is representing so much family that is mourning the loss of an aunt, a family member, a friend. There's a poem by Merritt Malloy where she gives some sort of direction for what we do with our grief. And I want you to imagine that Lorraine is saying this to all of us right now. When I die, give what's left of me away. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give to me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me and the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on in your eyes. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. For millennia, we've shared words from Psalms to bring comfort in times like these. So we'll share together the 23rd Psalm. Adonai ro'i lo'echzar, binot desha yarbitseni, Almain menuchot yanachaleni nafshi yashovev. Yancheni b'magle sedek l'ma'an shemo. Gam ki elech b'geitz al mavet. Lo irara ki ata imadi. 
Shiftacha umishantecha, Hema yanachamuni. Ta'aroch lefanai sholchan neged tororai, Jashanta vashemen roshi, Kosi ravaya, Achtov vachesed yardafuni kol yeme chayai, Vishavti bavet adonai laorech yamim. Please join me in the translation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A poem, L'chol ish Shem, each of us has a name. Each of us has a name given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our longing and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our struggles. Each of us has a name given by the sea, and given by our death. The 90th Psalm. Adonai, ma'ona tahayita lanu bedor vador, beterem harim yuladu vatcholel eretz vetevel, ume olam ad olam atael. God, you have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains came into being, Before you brought forth the earth and the world from eternity to eternity, you are God. You return us to dust, you decree, return you mortals, for in your sight a thousand years are as yesterday when it has passed, a watch in the night. The span of our life is threescore years and ten, are given strength fourscore years, but the best of those years pass by speedily, and we are then left in darkness. So teach us, God, to number our days that we might attain a heart of wisdom. Turn to us, show mercy to us. Satisfy us at daybreak with your love that we might sing for joy all our days. Let your deeds be seen by your servants, your glory by their, pe- by their children. May your favor, O oh God, be upon us. Establish the work of our hands that it might long endure. As we move into this time of memory, let's just take a moment and picture Lorraine. So there is an actual picture on your pamphlet you can look at if you need some inspiration. Or draw inward into your heart and into your mind's eye to bring Lorraine forward not just in this most recent challenging time, but let that image be of Lorraine at her fullest, her fiercest, her best. Perhaps you might call forth an image of her decked out in a not so subtle snakeskin blazer, oversized sunglasses, bold gold necklace. Maybe you might picture her on the motor scooter she got midlife 
driving around, sometimes towing things along the way, maybe even with a dog on her lap. Maybe you might picture her on the tennis court, doubles match, winning one of countless tournaments, or on the beach in Michigan City, Florida, a vacation somewhere fabulous. Hold on to that image as we are together today. Allow her to be here with us as we pay tribute to this one-of-a-kind woman and the legacy she leaves behind for us all. As Psalm 90, the one I read just a few moments ago, suggests, our legacies are carried out by the establishment of the work of our hands, that which we help to create, nurture, protect, And as Rabbi Conover shared, it's not hard to see that the most prized works of Lorraine's hands were each and every one of you, her beloved family, Michael and Rebecca, Kimberly and Tal, Jonah, Jacob, Josh, Noah, Naomi. There was really nothing more important to Lorraine than you, your family, And as such, it makes sense to see her life first and foremost through that lens. How her love of and devotion to her family characterized the essence of who she was, really from the very beginning of her life through to the end. Lorraine was born to her parents, Benjamin and Adele, on August 6, 1937 in Chicago. She was their second child with her brother Philip, nearly a full decade older. A close family, Lorraine had cherished relationships with her parents and with her brother. The family lived on the west side until Lorraine was nine, after which they moved to a house in Rogers Park. Tragically, Adele died when Lorraine was only 16, a loss that weighed heavily on her. After graduating from Sen High School, she matriculated to the University of Miami, but returned to Chicago, earning her teaching degree here because she didn't want to be that far away from home, especially from her father. She became an elementary and middle school teacher with both regular and substitute positions for a number of years. After she stopped teaching full-time, she also worked as a model at Bonwit Teller downtown and a makeup artist to boot, work she really loved. But let's travel back to when Lorraine began her teaching career at the same time that she met Richard at an art fair near the University of Chicago on the south side. Richard and a friend pulled up in a red Thunderbird. It was love at first sight. That initial encounter evolved into a relatively fast courtship. They married at the Blackstone Hotel, settled back in Chicago, first in Rogers Park, and later in their first house in Morton Grove, a stone's throw from her brother's house, too. Lorraine and Richard were two strong-willed people who, despite their challenges, always shared a meaningful relationship. Of note is that even after their divorce, they always remained friends, connected, and they were equally committed to holding their family together as one unified body. Later in life, they returned to one another, even dating again. They were a family, always. It is uh, somewhat eerie, or perhaps beshert, that Richard's yard site is today. We'll hear from Michael and Kimberly in a moment, but it must be said that Lorraine was a notably dedicated, present mother. Her children could talk to her about anything. She was always encouraging, wanting them to be involved in anything and everything, encouraging them to be inclusive and kind, and at the same time to respect and stand up for themselves. Lorraine wanted to be a part of everything, and she really was. Michael and Kimberly each spoke with their mom daily, Michael two to three times a day, Kimberly 20 plus times a day, (laughs) but daily nonetheless. Lorraine shared meaningful relationships with Rebecca and Tal as well, 
relationships each made up of both unique shared understandings and shared experiences. And Lorraine loved being a part of the larger family together, delighting in the respective families that Michael and Rebecca and Kimberly and Tall created. Which leads us to Lorraine's role as Grammy, or the once short-lived Mima title, to Jonah, Jacob, and Josh, and Grammy to Noah and Naomi. Lorraine adored her grandchildren. She loved them all equally. Each one, of her fa each one her favorite, sorry Jacob, sorry Jonah. <laughs> and though she loved the opportunity for them to be all together with her, it was important to Lorraine that she have unique relationships with each one of you, shared time one to one. And the memories abound. Although all unique, when we sat together the other day and shared the memories, each grandchild repeated the same ones, in no particular order. Buttered noodles, refrigerator Oreos, sleepovers with pillow forts and fights and VHS movies. The things for which Lorraine would ask her children permission to do with her grandchildren and the things for which she did not. She enjoyed taking the initiative, as it were, from time to time. She attended every game, match, show, activity, performance, what have you. She wanted to know her grandchildren, and she did. She wasn't afraid to ask them questions, sometimes approaching a line that might have been uncomfortable. And at the end of the day, she wanted the very best for each of them. And she loved each of them, and all of them most deeply. Lorraine was a unique and treasured person in and of herself as well, and the work of her hands was manifest in so many other facets of her life. She was athletic. She loved horseback riding as a child, later tennis, when she played competitively for many years. She loved being outside, whether riding a bicycle or a motor scooter. She loved dogs. She loved theater. She and Richard would go regularly, regularly to the Goodman or Victory Gardens with Philip and his wife, something that Michael, Rebecca, Kimberly, and Tall do now together. She was incredibly outgoing. She never met a stranger. She had many friends over the course of her life, so many lifelong. She was memorable, fierce, tenacious, sharp as a tack, and she was strong. And at the end of the day, Lorraine's heart of wisdom knew the true value of family first. That was it. Family vacations were everything, often taken with both the Bame and Pendo sides, everyone together. There was always room for more, one more call, one more dinner, one more trip. Lorraine walked the talk of prioritizing her family, of being there in every sense of the word. Family was home, and Lorraine modeled this value for her children and her grandchildren as they model within and across their own families this very same value, the purest and best testament to an enduring legacy that will be the way we remember Lorraine. Zichron Ali Vracha, may her memory always and only be for blessing. We'll hear now from family members. So Michael, Kimberly, please join us. This is one of the saddest days of my life. Losing a parent is very hard. I spent time with my family the last few days <clears throat> talking about all the good times we had together as a family. My mom was a strong force in our lives. It's hard for me to put the words together to express the love that I have for my mom. My mother was a very passionate woman. 
the more I think about the good times we had together, the more I realize the strong impact she had on my life. <clears throat> Mom was not a person to sit back and take direction. She was the one who took charge of any situation. Her tenacity was unmatched. She taught me how to advocate for myself at a very young age. Mom was a family person. She embodied strength and independence. Her family values were second to none, and when Rebecca and I started a family, she was with us to share every birthday, baseball game, basketball game, concert, and play. There was never an event that my mom would miss. Her connection with my children, Jonah, Jacob, and Joshua, was very special. She was able to form a special bond with each of them. If you say the word buttered noodles <laughs> to my kids, I swear, their mouth, mouths would start watering. The boys would be begging to have a sleepover at Grandma's for her buttered noodles. To this day, we don't know the secret recipe, but we think it was probably a lot of butter. <laughs> Through the simple dish, my mom showed her grandkids her love and got them excited for sleepovers at Grandma's. Mom's love was boundless, especially for her grandchildren. She lived for the joy of being with us, whether on vacations or during our weekly dinners. Our conversations were always thought-provoking and inspiring. She had a unique ability to make us all feel loved. Even during the last days of her life, she tried very hard to hold on. She was not one to give up. She fought very hard to stay with us, and on her last day, we were holding her hand and telling her how much we loved her. Mom, I love you, and you will always be in my heart. <laughs> I should have gone it first. <laughs> ah. If you knew my mom, you know how important her grandchildren and children were to her. She would rather spend time with us than do anything else, except maybe play tennis or go shopping or talk on the phone with Sandy. <laughs> uh, my mom was a remarkable woman. She was always up for going out, going on a trip, going out to dinner, to an indie rock show in the city at midnight, to a drag show, to theater, anything and everything. She didn't want to miss out on a thing, especially if we were going to be there. My mom had a deep love for life, which she expressed in her passion for meeting new people and exploring new places. She never met a stranger. Every, every person she encountered was a potential friend, and every conversation was an opportunity to learn something new or share a bit of her own warmth and wisdom. And her zest for life took her to many corners of the world, where she embraced new cultures and experiences with open arms and an open heart. From nude beaches and discos in Greece, to staying in my Israeli friend's apartment in Tel Aviv when I was studying abroad, mom was always up for an adventure, and we had quite a few. But no matter where her travels took her, home was always where her heart truly belonged, home with her family. It was in the laughter of her children, the smiles of her grandchildren, and the love she shared with all of us that she found her greatest joy. One of her favorite things to do was to spend time at our beach house in Michigan City with Noah and Naomi, watching fireworks, and going to the parades. Okay, well, those might actually be my favorite things, but she liked to come along. COVID was a difficult time for mom, as she was very isolated and living alone. For a person who was outgoing, always visiting friends, playing tennis, playing canasta, shopping at Neiman's and Nordstrom Rack, and going out for meals and theater with her friends, it was extremely difficult to be completely on her own without the comfort of friends and family. On top of that, she had some health struggles, and she lost her childhood friend, Sandy Schiffman, to COVID, which was a devastating loss to us all. I am so thankful that my husband, Tal, realized the hardship mom was going through and suggested that we all move to Florida together to isolate in warmer weather. Mom was eager and anxious to join us. It was so special to have those months together living with mom, especially as an adult. And I'm so thankful to Tal for that time together. 
Mom developed quite a sweet tooth in Florida, and I, I will never eat gummy bears or Twizzlers again without thinking of her sneaking a few every time she passed through the kitchen, and her room was through the kitchen, so it was a lot. I think she had six cavities by the time we got back to Chicago. Mom was a strong lady. She always stood up for herself and her family. One winter, while she was away in Florida, she got robbed at knife point in the elevator of her apartment building. According to her, it was just a small knife, <laughs> but it actually wasn't. Um, while she did hand over her purse to the thief, after a few moments, she grabbed his arm and demanded her cell phone back <laughs> because she knew that I would be so upset and worried if I couldn't get a hold of her. If you don't believe me, you can Google it. Uh, the video of the robbery was on the news and in the Miami Herald. Just Google Lorraine Baim robbery and you can watch the whole episode. Mom was more than just a mother to me. She was really my best friend, my confidant, and the person I spoke to more times in a day than anyone else. If I needed to talk at 12 a.m., I knew that I could call her and she'd be awake and eager to talk. To say that our bond was special would be an understatement. It was a connection rooted in love, understanding, and the shared joy of each other's company. Family was everything to mom. She had an innate ability to make each of us feel cherished and important. Her love was the glue that held us together, and her practical wisdom was the light that guided us through some dark moments. Mom always knew if something was wrong, even if I didn't tell her or couldn't find the words to express it. So as we say goodbye today, let's remember the lessons that she taught us to love without reservation, to embrace every new experience with enthusiasm, to always go and do, and to cherish the time we have with those we love. My mom may not be with us in body, but her spirit lives on in the countless lives she touched in her grandchildren and the memories that we hold dear and the love that binds us together forever. So rest in peace, Mom. Thank you for being my best friend, for loving all of us so deeply, and for showing us what it means to live a full and beautiful life. You'll be missed more than words can express, but your legacy of love will continue in your grandchildren and your children and inspire us every day. And Mom, don't worry. We will always remember you. <sighs> Thank you for those beautiful words. We'll hear now from Lorraine's niece, Amy. Ditto to everything the rabbis and Kimmy and Michael said. Um, you couldn't have said it any better. So for fear of repeating everything you've already said, I, I just wanted to write a letter <clears throat> from my heart, from me to my auntie, and I would like to share it with you. You may not get all of it, but thank you for listening. <clears throat> And by the way, he would love this picture. <laughs> he would love this picture. <sighs> Dear Auntie, <clears throat> you know how much I love you. Growing up down the street from you, <clears throat> having you make me your famous cremettes, obviously it started a long time ago, <clears throat> which was basically, I know the secret recipe, which was basically elbow macaroni butter and cottage cheese, which I thought was a delicacy. Oh, you made it for me every time I came over. <clears throat> we had a lot of fun things too. 
I remember peeing on your floor once because you told me I could hold it on the way home from Golf Mill, but um, I couldn't. <laughs> and you didn't get mad, but you did make me clean it up. <laughs> Living at your house <clears throat> over the summer when I moved to Florida and you looking through my drawers, if you know, you know. <sighs> Spending time at the Chateau with you, Kimmy, Michael, Nana Bertha, and Papa Ben, and then just spending time in Florida when I get older, just with us. <clears throat> you were always my wingman at the bars and jazz clubs, telling guys you were just a few years older than me. <laughs> we always had fun, and we always found a way to have fun even on our trips to Mayo Clinic. You were always my champion. If someone tried to hurt me, you were there, trying to make it right, with Sandy by your side. Being an only child, you gave me Michael and Kimmy. I'll never forget when I was at camp at Interlock and you sent me a letter to tell me that you were pregnant with Kimmy. We didn't know you were Kimmy yet. <laughs> and Michael wanted to name her. <clears throat> I remember exactly where I was standing when I read that letter. I'm 12 years older than you, Kimmy, but I'm so happy we are so close. And Michael, when, when we were younger, I loved feeling like your older sister, especially when you came to Champaign to visit. <laughs> and then, Auntie, your growing family, Michael, Rebecca, Jonah, Jacob, Joshua, Kimmy, Tal, Noah, and Naomi, and my girls, Jory and Sarah, and how beautiful it is to see all the cousins so close and the beautiful memories we're all sharing. Auntie, <clears throat> you had a special relationship with my daughters and they love you very, very much. I will miss our daily calls. I guess she was on the phone a lot every day. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> you remembering all the details even if, even if I didn't want you to, and continuously asking me about them, even if I didn't want you to. <laughs> Especially after I got divorced, always asking me about my dates and giving me much unsolicited advice. <laughs> we shared our love for lamb chops and salmon and would often call each other while we were eating them or making them and letting each other know <clears throat> when they were on sale at the Jewels. And the fillets too, because well, you know, we would always say that they tasted much better when they were on sale. <laughs> this letter doesn't say it all, but all I have to say that is in my heart, you already know. <clears throat> Your last few words to me last Sunday were, I love you. We had such a good run, didn't we? And I responded, yes, we did, and gave you one last tight squeeze. I love you and will hear your voice every day. Love your darling niece, because that's what she always called me. Thank you, Amy. And last, we'll invite up Noah and Naomi. Growing up, I always knew I had a support system of strong women behind me. My amazing mom and her amazing mom, my grandma Lorraine, or as I call, call, called her Grammy. Growing up, there was never a night that didn't end in calling Grammy to say goodnight. And every night, she would ask about every detail of my day, always wanting to know the little things that made me happy and remembering them. There's never a day that goes by without me feeling her love. 
Sleepovers at Grandma's house are a core memory for me with endless amounts of the best buttered noodles, <laughs> <laughs> ice cream sundaes, and pillow fights. The morning after always filled with going to dog shelters or the dog park where we shared our love for animals and always looking for a new dog for Grandma. My, always, my Grandma always loved to take girl trips and spend time with me and my mom, and those are memories that I'll always keep very close to my heart. I love you, Grammy. Naomi and Noah, thinking about your grandmother at your B'nai Mitzvah, how proud she was. We are now going to recite a prayer in which we pray that your Grammy's soul, that your mom's soul, your mother-in-law's soul, your aunt's soul, Lorraine's soul is bound up in eternal life. I invite everyone to bring up a cherished memory of Lorraine's tenacity, her courage, unsolicited advice, humor, her style, the way she loved us, her pride in us, her love of life. Hold her in your heart as we rise for El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim Shochin Bam Romim Hamse Menucha Nechona Tachat Kanfei Hashachina Im Kuroshim Torim Kazoha Rakia Mazirim Et Nishmat Lea Shahalachal Olama Baal harachamim yasti reha beseter kanafav la ulamim. Vitzror vitzror hachaim et nishmata. Adonai hu nachalata. Vetanuach bashalom al mishkava van omar. Amen. May the source of life, the fountain of all being, open our hearts to compassion and our eyes to wisdom that we might glimpse in perfect peace the way of all things. May Lorraine's memory be for us an abiding blessing. And may we never let the light of her love grow dim in our hearts. May we remember all her worthy and righteous deeds that her memory be bound up in the bond of life forever. May Lorraine's death awaken us to this truth that the bond of love we shared and share could never be severed in sorrow. May she always rest in peace. We say together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. This concludes our service here at the synagogue. Interment will take place immediately at the family plot at Shalom Memorial Park, just in Arlington Heights. For those of you interested in joining the procession, we won't be forming just outside the synagogue in the parking lot. If you're going in procession, please make sure you obtain an orange funeral safety sticker as well as a magnetic flag to place on the rooftop portion of your vehicle. While in procession, please make sure you have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times and please drive as closely to the car in front of you as safety permits. Please try to try and avoid talking on any cellular device while en route to the cemetery. Upon return from the cemetery, the family will be sitting Shiva at the Baim residence, 226 Ivy Lane in Highland Park until 9 p.m. this evening with a uh, minion at 7 p.m. Moral contributions in Lorraine's memory can be made to Orphans of the Storm, the Mayo Clinic, and to North Shore Congregation Israel. That information, as well as the location for the Shiva, is on the folder that you received on the way in. If you did not receive one on the way in, there's some more just outside the synagogue chapel. The following individuals have been asked to serve as pallbearers. When I call your names, if you could please stand Next to the casket, Jacob, Jonah, and Joshua, Baim, Naomi, and Na Na Noah, and Naomi Pendo. We're going to ask everyone to please rise as we escort the casket and the family from the chapel.